And paid post-operative range of motion remains a frequent complication after ACL reconstruction. This problem is often related to preoperative stiffness and early surgery after the injury. But what about bone bruise in this matter? To analyze the bone bruise influence on the recovery after ACL reconstruction, we performed a prospective study on 217 patients who underwent ACL reconstruction by BTV graft. The mean delay between ACL injury and surgery was around 400 days. Goniometric knee range of motion measurement was performed the day before surgery at six weeks and three months postoperatively. The presence of bone bruise and its localization were analyzed on preoperative MRI. We noted two types of bone bruise, the isolated lateral tibial plateau bone bruise type and the typical bone bruise when contusion was localized on both lateral condyle and lateral tibial plateau. We didn't find any isolated lateral condyle bone bruise. After two years of follow-up, all data of patients who required a further surgery for arthritis were reviewed to evaluate the arthritis rate in the series and its relation with bone bruise and delayed range of motion. Seven potential risk factors believed to have an effect on postoperative recovery were assessed. Age, gender, limited preoperative range of motion, bone contusion, operative delay less than 45 days, risk lesions, and postoperative rehabilitation management. Out of these seven factors, only four were significantly related to delayed recovery of range of motion. These factors are female gender, limited preoperative range of motion, typical contusion of the lateral compartment, and early surgery within 45 days. Neither age, rehabilitation type, risk lesions, nor the isolated contusion of the lateral tibial plateau had any significant influence on postoperative recovery. After logistic regression analysis, limited preoperative mobility, type typical bone bruise and female gender remained significant and each of these factors was potentially able to induce delay of recovery independently from the two others. In addition, Limited preoperative range of motion and typical bone confusion were strongly correlated. Concerning the operative delay influence, statistical study had shown that early surgery within 45 days can lead to delayed postoperative recovery only in the group of patients with typical bone bruise. In this group, delayed recovery was, where, was strongly correlated with limited preoperative range of motion and with typical bone confusion. Finally, after studying the arthritis rate after two years in the series, we found it significantly higher in patients with delayed range of motion recovery compared to patients without delayed recovery. A correlation between bone bruise, delayed range of motion recovery, and arthritis incidence <coughs> is demonstrated. In conclusion, our study has demonstrated that typical bone bruise of the lateral condyle and tibial plateau is a major risk factor for a difficult rehabilitation with an increased rate of arthritis after ACL reconstruction, while isolated contusion of the lateral tibial plateau had no influence on postoperative recovery. Anyway, full preoperative range of motion doesn't guarantee a smooth postoperative recovery when typical bone bruise is associated, especially if surgery is performed early after ACL rupture. We were able to differentiate two levels of risk: ACL injury without or with moderate bone bruise of the lateral tibial plateau and with complete preoperative range of motion have a low risk of rehabilitation difficulties after surgery regardless of the delay between injury and surgery. <coughs> but when typical bone bruise is associated and early surgery is risky, even if preoperative range of motion is complete, the risk of needing a further surgery for arthritis is significant in this case. According to these findings, we changed the timing decision and currently we postpone surgery every time ACL tear is associated with typical bone bruise on MRI. I thank you very much for your attention.